Hey everybody, it's Belinda. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about some closing interview questions. Some questions that HR professionals like to ask towards the end of the video after they've already asked you a, a, quite a few questions to kind of close it out. So I'm going to talk about these top three um, questions that employers, that, that interview interviewers like to ask um, at the end of the interview. So the first one is, why should I hire you? That personally is my favorite question to ask. I love asking that question. I love, love, love asking that question because if you can't tell me why I should hire you, then I won't. It's as simple as that. Um, sometimes people can get hung up on that question, but you should be able to say why you should be offered the position. And let me give you some um, good answers and some bad answers. So why should why should I hire you? Because you're hardworking, you're dependable, you know, list the skills that you have as it relates to the position that you're interviewing for. Some not good answers. Because y'all have a lot of PTO time. Because I want to work, I really want to work from home and this position allows me to work from home. Because I need benefits and this company allows benefits. Those aren't good answers. Those are the answers I've heard before, but those are not good answers on why I should hire you. You should be able to come up with a laundry list. Why do? You, why should you get picked? Out of everybody here, out of all the people I'm interviewing, why should I pick you? Not because you're a nice person. Not because, and I've heard this, it's because I'm perfect. Not because of that either. Tell me what makes you perfect or what makes you your skills so great and why I should bring you on. Why should you be hired? Again, if you can't answer, why should I hire you? You won't be hired. You have to sell that. Only you can sell that song. Um, so think about that. Think about, have a list. It's kind of like an elevator elevator pitch for um, when you meet new people or you have a potential to meet people. You know, they tell you to have an elevator pitch. You need to have an elevator closing pitch for why should I hire you? And that's the time to list all of your wonderful attributes as it relates to the job. Please don't name things that ha won't benefit the company or has nothing to do with the company. So when you're naming things, it needs to relate to the comp the position that you're applying for. So think about that. Your answer should relate to the position that you're applying for. The second question. So if you were offered the position, what contributions would we expect you to make during the first three months? That's another good question. A lot of times, if you, especially technical jobs, but if you promise, come in and promise that you can do all these things, then one, we're going to want to see that. And two, what do you, what do you think you can deliver in the first three months? So a good example would be, um, and I am a good example would be president Biden, um, yesterday was his first day in office and he wrote a lot of executive orders. So if somebody was asked him, what do you plan to do the first three months? He can say, I plan to pass all these executive orders. That's a good example. So what do you, what can we expect your contribution? So you think about that. Um, a lot of times, because a lot of times before the interview, you may not exactly know what the position requires. So it's going to come up with some thorough, quick thinking you know, kind of on the spot, but you want to think of what can you contribute when they're telling you about the position, you know, as you're in the interview and the, um, HR representative is telling you about the position and what the duties are, you know, et cetera. You should be thinking at that time, um, what you can offer. Oh, you know, I would like to work here. I know how to work, you know, that machine, or I know how to work this type of computer, um, et cetera. Hey everybody, it's Belinda. I just wanted to come in and say, Get your 90 days to employment journal today. If you're looking for a job or you know somebody who's looking for a job, get your 90 days to employment journal and get on the path of getting employment. Back to your video. And the last question, which is, do you have any questions for me? So in my companies, when we are training people on how to interview, we always do the whole, you know, when the interview's over, they're going to say, because they always do. Do you have any questions for me? 
the answer should always be yes. Yes, I do. I have some questions for you. Now, the questions that you have should not be about benefits. They should not be about pay at the first interview. Benefits or pay. Um, hopefully, they've already talked about that during the interview. But if they haven't, you still shouldn't ask that. You want to stick to just about the work or about the person interviewing you. So you want to stick to that. Try to come up between three and five questions. You know, you don't want to have um, 15 questions to come back at them with. So between three to five, because, you know, like I say, it's not Jeopardy where, oh, here's another, here's another, here's another. The other thing, too, is you can have your questions already written out. You can already have them written down. So what you can say is, I do have a lot of questions. I do have some questions. Um, I wrote them down. Is it okay if I get it out my bag? Or you can say, I put it on my phone. Is it okay if I get it off my phone? So, because um, a lot of times, you know, you're trying to remember what the questions are and when you're nervous, you may forget what you really want to ask. So you can have, you know, more than five questions on the paper, but make sure that the question that you ask um, hasn't already been answered. That's another thing too, because sometimes someone will ask a question in the interview that I've already answered. So that shows me you wasn't paying attention when I asked, when I when I talked about that the first time. So you know you could say, okay, oh no, you've answered that question, and then oh here's one, and then you can ask the question. So you can have more than five written down on your paper, but make sure that you're only asking between three to five and that the questions that you do ask don't have anything to do with pay or uh, benefits or anything like that, you know, and that the question hasn't already been answered. So you can ask, when do you plan to make a decision? That's my favorite answer to that question. You know, that should always be asked. When do you plan to make a decision? Now you ask that question. If, it hasn't already been answered because sometimes in the course of the interview, the HR person may say, you know, as they're talking about the position, they can say, well, we plan to make a decision by um, next Friday. So you want to make sure of that. Now, if you want to make sure you understood, that's what they said. You can say, so earlier you said that you plan to make a decision by next Friday. How will you let candidates know? That shows that you were paying attention. That shows that, you know, you were listening, you know, and it's still kind of asking the question. So then the person usually will say, well, we'll either call or send an email. So that's when they plan to make a decision. So you always want to know that because that helps for you when you follow up. Now, follow up and a thank you, thank you card or thank you email are two different things. So I'm not going to go in a whole lot of detail on that here. But what I'm going to say is that when you, when they tell you when they plan to make a decision, tells you when you should follow up. Not when you should send a thank you email, but when you should follow up. So um, you always want to know the answer to that. When do you when do you plan to make a decision? When So that way you'll know when to follow up. So always have a list of questions between three to five questions that you're going to ask because after every single interview, every single one, they're going to say, do you have any questions for me? And you need to have some questions. You know, think of, uh, again, and make sure the questions aren't things that they've already answered. You can tell me about the work environment. Tell me tell me um, why you like working here. You know, a lot of times, you know, when someone asks me that, I'm always like, oh, okay, that they're interested. You know, that's something interesting. They want to know, you know, about me or, you know, what I think about the company, et cetera. So, and it gets me talking because mainly during the interview, a lot of times, you know, you're doing most of the talking. So then that gets the HR person talking. So you can say, what do you like working about the company? Or can you tell me, you know, how's training done here? Or just anything that's kind of work related that doesn't necessarily have to do with benefits or pay. Now, you may be thinking, well, when do I ask about benefits or pay if it hasn't already been discussed? So I will talk about that. In another video, you got to wait for it. Um, go through the videos. It may already be there. So these are the top three closing interviews that I picked to go over for today. Um, there are more interview. There are more videos coming. So check out all of our videos 
on our YouTube channel. Um, till, till then, see you later.